Hey everybody, welcome back to some War Groove. I'm the Comic Foil. Um, I don't know what that, I was just doing with my delivery there. But uh, hey, we unlocked some side quests recently. And I just noticed when I walk over to this side quest, uh, Caesar. Caesar is my uh, is my icon here. So I think we're going to get to play as Caesar. Canine Justice, alone in the woods. Caesar finds some villagers in need of aid. Let's freaking aid them with this dog. Ah! Help! Outlaws! Hand over your valuable valuables, and no one get and no one will get hurt. Jeez, can I can I read? Apparently not. What have we here? Be off with ya! Can't an outlaw make a dishonest living in these woods without being hounded by armored beasties? I love low tier villains in video games who talk like this. You don't intimidate me. He intimidates me. Yeah, and me. Just get this village back to the camp and lock him up, will ya? Oh, the villager. Get this villager back to the camp. Alright, why? I don't know if you guys can hear that. I'm getting a little bit of sound stuttering, like my computer's having trouble loading this. I can't believe that. Uh, Gruff. Well, the commander brought us to a tumble-down fortress. Interesting. We'd better explore. Alright, so we gotta defeat all the outlaws. We got, uh... We got some, uh, Fog of War. What do we have here? Um... We got a mage, a powerful unit built to combat air threats. Critical hit when defense is three or above. Able to heal allied... Sorry, allied targets by 20%. Okay, so defense has to be three or above, so it gets a lot weaker when it's hurt. I thought it was the opposite. I thought it was when it's the... I thought when it was that when mages were weak, they got... Okay. Um... Yeah, so let's uh, take a look here. So we're gonna be playing as Caesar. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. I like how everybody just kind of accepts... Everybody just kind of accepts that they have a uh, dog leader. Um... Yeah, I have no idea what to expect once I enter this fortress. So we're gonna smash it open with some pikemen here. And, uh... Yeah, I have a heal command. Let's get a dog in there. Okay, alright, so dog can see what's going on. Um like a lot happening in here. And these are outlaws, so I was kind of wondering if I'd be fighting more like Felm Felheim units or what, but um, no, these are just... Yeah, and they're, and they're purple, so they're completely independent from any of the four major factions, which is good to know. Um, yeah, since there's only uh, one place to attack from here... Uh, it was very easy to tank that with a single unit. I'm gonna bust in here with my dogs. Yes, okay, so even my... Even my weakened dogs can take care of... Can take care of you there. Unfortunately, they have, uh, battle pups of their own. So we'll have to be careful once we enter in here. Um, oh! Why is your movement that terrible? I thought your movement would be better than that. I guess let's, um, it does cost money to heal, and that's unfortunate, but we'll, we'll do it anyway, because it doesn't, it doesn't look like I'm going to have a lot of opportunities to create new units. Um, okay, sorry, Pikeman, I thought I was going to be able to move this other Pikeman around and get him in there, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So, you're taking two attacks here, Pikemen. At least two attacks, because there might be more enemies just past this fog. Hard to say. Mm. Nope, that's it. Okay, good. Um, so, how far can you... You can only move that far. Okay. So here's my plan. I'm going to have... 
this battle pup move all the way over here. And just wait. Then I'm going to... Yeah, so you should be able to get to here once I move these pikemen. How far can you get? Not as far as I would like, unfortunately. Unfortunately, not as far as I want you to be able to go. Yeah, and I can't attack with from just there, so... Get around to no. Nope. All right, Pikeman. If you attack from there, will you be okay? Yeah, it looks like you'll be okay. It looks like I'm not getting a counterattack. So I just hope nobody too strong comes out of the fog there. That that would be unfortunate. But now I can get this battle pup in here, and it will get a crit because if an enemy, if I attack with battle pups and the target has another battle pup adjacent to them, the first battle pup gets a critical hit. That's how it works. I don't make the rules. And how far can you get, mage? Good! You can get uh, close enough to heal the spike. That's, that's great. That's awesome. And we got Caesar up front, so Caesar might be... Yeah, Caesar's gonna be taking a hit, but that's okay because he's a good, powerful boy. Look at these... Oh, look at these archers that come in to take the hits for- That's because they can't show violence against dogs. They never show violence against dogs in the game. It's always, like, dogs running away in fear. So he has, like, a posse that comes up to help. Very cute. Uh... So if you wait here, Battle Pups... And I, th I think this mission's gonna be mostly about trying to organize your characters to get critical hits so that they don't take damage back. Because, aside from the mage, we don't have a way to replenish units, and we only have so much gold to do that healing with. So... We'll move everybody up. I am going to keep healing anyway, though. Yeah, and that healed both of them, because it heals everybody that's within a certain range. So I gotta keep that in mind, the group healers. Alright. I like the name Caesar for the dog, too, because it, like... Did you see how fabulous the dog looked before it, before it hopped back? It, like, did a little pose. Um... So, like, my first thought is Julius Caesar, you know, it has, like, a nice royal name for a very regal-looking dog, but also, um... But also, it's kind of like a Caesar Milan, the, uh, the dog whisperer. Oh. Uh, that's not quite gonna... This isn't gonna quite be the killing blow that I want it to be. Okay, but that... This guy is now, like, practically useless. So I don't know if I'm even gonna keep worrying about him. Um, yeah, dogs also have such better movement. Which is another thing to keep in mind. Yeah, so rather than finishing off that archer, I'm going to... Start weakening these guys here. So that they can't do as much damage. Because if I kept them at full health, they'd probably be able to really mess some of my group up. So I also noticed there's these little walls off to the side. Um, that I think are maybe prisons that I can bust out some of these villagers. They mentioned they were locking up villagers, so I think I can unlock them up. I think is the plan. Alright, you're going after my mage. But, yeah, you got, like, no damage left. Now, you guys, on the other hand. Yeah, after Caesar barks 
twice when he goes into battle. He, like, does this pose, and he looks... He looks very fabulous. He is such a good boy. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, so which... It's gonna be an easy kill either way. I mean, I guess they are doing, like, tiny percentages of damage. So, like, yeah, we should keep trying to dispose of them. Um... Yeah, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have this pikeman just move forward a little bit and attack you, get you out of the way. And let's go see what's in this corner here. Okay, so yeah, there is something that we can fight. Alright, and we broke that open. Which yay, we get villagers. Aru! Prisoners! Commander Caesar has inspired them to fight! Whoa! Oh, I can't replenish units! Now I have more units! Caesar's still agitated. There must be more prisoners that need our help. They just saw this dog and they were like, Yeah, this dog came to help us. Let's support the dog. Absolutely. I am here for it, guys. Oh, this is, this is my favorite... This is my favorite mission so far. Um... go, and, um, you're gonna wait there, and you're gonna come in with the kill. Um, I mentioned in one of the last episodes of Fire Emblem Path of Radiance that Oscar and I recorded that I've been feeling extra tactics-minded lately because I've been playing a lot of chess lately, um, and I wanted to tell some of my stories about that, but I didn't really get around to it. Oh, that's more, that's more damage than I wanted him to take. Uh, and I can't... Yikes, and I can't get you over to where you can do much in return, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do against you, other than just bite you as hard as I can. Um, yeah, they're getting weak, and these, uh, these archers are probably going to be able to take out one of them. Unfortunately, so I, I, I think they're gonna get that doggo right there. But I'm moving the other one back. Oh, I think I got a little bit confused how this works. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll heal this way. Okay, so they heal units in like a plus sign formation. I thought they'd heal everybody in that attack's range. Um, I'll move Caesar up more. I'll have Caesar keeping the Trailblazer here. And rather I'll have this stupid swordsman. This door likely leads to the main hall. Right. And who knows what's inside? Probably better to free all the prisoners before we head in there. Okay. Yeah, good point. I see, um, two other places where there are probably prisoners for us to free. So, yes, I will prioritize that then. go over here. Yeah, so this is something, um, so let me preface this story by saying that I like chess a lot. I don't think I'm very horribly good at it. Um, I learned to play chess at a pretty young age, but it's not like I ever learned strategies or studied, like, the chess notation and stuff. Um, and so my friend Dylan, uh, my good friend Dylan is a big drinker. Um, this is relevant to the story. Uh, had... Has this board. He owns... 
a board that's all shot glasses. It is shot chess. It is uh, 32 small shot glasses, each one about the size of like a third of a regular shot. Um, and years and years ago, um, this was when he was still going to college at Temple University um, with uh, Allie, who is now my wife. Um, I was I was only dating her at the time, but this was after I had already graduated from college myself. Um, and when I was in college, I didn't. I don't think I drank a single time the entire time that I was in college. I just I don't know. I was very averse to drinking. I still don't really like drinking. I don't. I don't like being inebriated. I don't like anything where I feel like I'm not in direct control of my actions. Um, Ooh, uh, Caesar's got his groove ready. But, uh, the first time I ever did drink was while visiting them at Temple, and Dylan busted out this shot chess. And he's like, John, I know you love games. And I'm like, oh, I do love games. Um, and he went really easy on me at the time, because this was the first time I ever, like, drank more than one drink in a sitting. And I was drinking, like, really, really watered down some kind of, uh fruit-filled cocktail kind of drink that was, like, massively... It was, like, super watered-down margarita. Uh, Caesar, you're... you're glowing! Oh, his groove must be fully charged! He looks so... inspiring! Inspiring is right! Caesar's groove inspires adjacent... spent units to have a second go. Oh! Okay, so he's like a Fire Emblem dancer. I gotcha. So we're gonna move you there. We're gonna move... Um, we're gonna have you attack, and you'll get a critical now, because you're next to another pikeman. Okay, so this is very cool. I need to use this to its fullest here. Um, that's gonna be moving this ranger up here. Okay, and there's the door. Let's use this groove. Inspire. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so gosh darn inspiring. I love it. I love it so much. Okay, not quite enough to destroy that wall, but that's okay. And I think if I move this mage here and heal, now I'll be able to heal Caesar and, the, and both of these pikemen a little bit. That's very neat. Okay, and I found another unit here. Um, yeah, so this was... Shot Chess was a thing that we played once, like, many, many years ago. And, um... I won at the time because I was better at chess, but I wasn't, like, really drinking because it was my first time ever with alcohol. He was, like, drinking, like, straight whiskey, and I was drinking some super watered-down thing. Um, so, more recently now, because that was years ago, um, a, about a month ago, he brought this um, shot chess back over. And I've, you know, I'm not a big drinker still, but I've drunk more since then. Uh, brilliant! More prisoners free and up for a fight! Nice, I like how they're all different units, too. Seems there are still prisoners trapped in the fortress. We have to find them. So yeah, I've been playing a lot of shot chess. That's pretty much what all that was amount uh, amounting to. Um, and at first I was, like, really destroying Dylan. Also, now we're both... Um, now I'm playing with the same amount of alcohol as he is, so, um, both of it, every time you lose a piece, you have to drink it, and that's a, uh, about a third of a shot of straight-up whiskey. Um, so I've also been learning, I guess, about different whiskeys. Um, sorry, look at my, Dylan's actually calling me right now, but I'm not going to pick up because I'm doing a Let's Play. Sorry, buddy. Uh, so what are we gonna do about 
you there. Can I, can I just kill you with this pikeman? Will that be enough? No, I didn't think so. Okay, how about you? If I... Will you be able to get over there? Probably not. Okay, let's do it with the mage. Let's see a mage attack. We actually haven't... I haven't attacked with a mage ever. Boom! Yeah, that's also a critical attack because you had all that health still. That's cool, I like it. So I just, I feel like maybe I should keep some people up here and then we can come in from the north with, we can come in to the main hall from two sides and kind of do a splinter. Yeah, do, do kind of a pincer maneuver here. Up, oh, they got archers. All right, that might be it for you, Pikeman. Yep. All right, it happens. Yeah, so not only am I getting a better constitution for drinking, but I'm playing a lot of chess, which is the part I really like about it, is playing all the chess. Um, yeah, also, Dylan's probably calling because uh, he's coming over. We're playing uh, more D&D tonight. Right now, um, our friend Dan, who lives in Philadelphia, is running... We're playing over Roll20 online, um, some D&D &D 5e. Uh, it's one of the, um, it's one of the pre-made campaigns. It's, uh, what, what, what's this one called? It's the new one, uh, uh, Icewind Dale, which, which has been pretty cool so far. We've had, uh, two sessions of it so far. I'm playing a wizard. The wizard's name is Prospero Ferdinand. Uh, doctor. Doctor. Professor. Professor Prospero. No, Doctor. Yeah, Doctor sounds better. Uh, Doctor Prospero Ferdinand. Um, forgot to actually move more units over here. Yeah, so that pikeman's just kind of hanging out by himself over there. Uh, not the mages. And we got some dog versus dog here. And yeah, since D&D also has, like, grid-based movement, but we haven't really gotten into a big grid-based battle yet. We haven't really gotten into much real combat. Icewind Dale is neat. It's, um... It's especially a lot of, like... A lot of the foes in Icewind Dale are actually just the environment itself, because it's up in the cold, cold north. Everything is very, very cold. Um... Like, our biggest danger so far has just been we got caught in a blizzard and trying to survive it. And, um, yeah, it's four players. There's, um, I'm playing a wizard, and my wife, Allie, is playing a monk. And, um, yeah, that's what I'll do. And Dylan is playing a halfling fighter. And then Brittany, who is uh, Dan, the DM's girlfriend, uh, she's also playing from Philly, so she's the only one that's not, um, who, who, she's the only player who's, uh, communicating to us via online, um, is playing a druid, a tabaxi druid, because this is D&D &D 5e, so the way Pathfinder has cat folk, this has tabaxi, if they're a race of cat-like people, kind of like in Skyrim, how they have, uh, what are the cat people called in uh, Elder Scrolls? Is it the Khajiit? Is that it? Or was Khajiit a character's name? I don't remember. Um, yeah, so... Oh no, don't kill my mage! Don't kill my mage, don't do it! Oh, you killed my mage. I liked my mage a lot. I know, I'm not being- I'm not being terrible enough, it's my own fault. Ugh. Hate Fog of War. And this is my thing about Fog of War, because I feel like a lot of strategy games come back to chess. And in chess, it's not like you can't see... the other player's pieces, ever. But then again, there are strategy games built around you not knowing everything. The point is, you don't know what's in- what's going on in the other person's head. Not that you don't- you don't know what they're gonna do. Not that you don't know what pieces that they have. So I don't know. I never really liked it. But I do appreciate um, how this game does Fog of War that I at least get the sense that um, 
I, ne I never feel like the game is cheating. It, it, it seems like the characters... It seems like the enemy is also experiencing fog of war. Because a lot of times I see them do things, and it seems like they didn't know I was coming. Um. Okay, so let's, uh... Let's do an inspire here. Yeah. That, was, that wasn't the best Inspire, but I'll take it. So yeah, I guess in a D&D terms, Caesar would kind of be the Bard, which was also a thing in Fire Emblem. Okay, this ought to do it. I also split up my Pikemen. I have two Pikemen, and I split them up, which is pretty dumb of me, but hopefully I get more Pikemen from this prison over here. Uh, so I had already been playing a lot of chess, and then um, we started watching a certain show on Netflix. Maybe you see where I'm going with this. Uh, the Queen's Gambit is a very, very good show. Um, <laughs> it was really good. Uh, there's only one season. I think there's only going to be one season. It doesn't seem like a story that needs to be continued. Um, with the one season, it feels like it kind of did everything it wanted to do. Those were the last pri prisoners! We freed everyone! Cool, more pikemen, thank you. Now that everyone is free, we should enter the main hall and finish off these cutthroat outlaws. Okay, um, let me check my timer here. Yep, we still got... I, I think we can finish this chapter up today. So, good. Opening that up. The doors to the main hall are down. Uh-oh, there's a knight in here. What's this? A dog? Who let a dog in here? This is no way to run a professional outfit. You guys had dogs. You, you had battle pups, but I guess they weren't allowed in the main hall. We can't just have animals wandering into our camp. Oh, shut it, Fluffball. That's it. Everyone get in here and help me fight this dog! Okay, we still can't see into there. Um, we're gonna break through the other door as well. Yeah, all of my battle pups have been defeated, which would have really helped me right now. Um... Yeah, we'll put Caesar in the front. That'll that'll give us the best view possible. I I could move that swordsman forward as like a sacrificial lamb, but I'd rather wait and see. I'm a little worried because I know they have a knight. Oh man, everybody got stuck in here. Okay, so that's gonna be the like second cavalry when, when those four on the left finally get in. Queen's Gambit is a really good show. I recommend it. Even if you're not really a chess person, because it's about chess. It's about a young woman who's kind of a prodigy at chess and her journey to um, not only to try and be the best in the world, but also to just kind of figure out what she wants to do with her life. Like, obviously she wants to play chess with her life, but like what that entails, if that's like enough of a life etc. And also you got, it's a pretty good period piece because it takes place mostly in the, in the 60s, um, in a time where, um, you know, you got all the Cold War stuff going on, uh, but also people aren't really looking for women to succeed in much of anything, let alone chess, which is more of a man's game. They even mentioned that there's like a woman's league a few times, and she doesn't want to play in the woman's league, she wants to play in the regular league, and it kind of makes you wonder, like, why would there be a woman's league for chess? Like, I get that, like, you know, you could have arguments about men and women being biologically different to necessitate having, you know, a WNBA and etc. Like, yeah, men tend to be taller and physically stronger if left to their own devices unless you train very specifically. But, like, chess is chess. Like, 
Are we saying that there's some kind of... It, di it doesn't make sense to me that there was ever a woman's lead for chess. That's just silly. Um, and, you know, that's the kind of silliness, I guess, that is a major conflict for the main character, Death, in uh, Queen's Gambit. Good show. You should watch it, even if you're not... Yeah, even... I said this already, but even if you're not, like, really big into chess, um, it's a good show to watch. Gets the uh, comic foil seal of approval. Um, my favorite part of it is just there's a lot of good chess shade. Um, Allie doesn't really play chess, though, and she liked it just as much as I did. Uh, yeah, probably the best season of television I've watched this year, and that's including uh, the currently running second season of Mandalorian. I really like The Mandalorian. It's a good show. Um, you know, as a Star Wars fanboy, of course, I like it a lot. Were you running? Was Knight running away? Yeah, too bad I lost those pikemen. Pikemen would be really good at dealing with that knight. Yeah, and I guess different units have different sight ranges, and that's how these... I mean, once the knight moved over there, then the fog of war cleared up around those units that they were able to start attacking my guys there. Um, that's okay. The people coming in on the north are just really meant to break up their ranks a little bit more. But this is... This is starting to get scary. Um... Okay, so taking you out there, and... Ah, oh, Caesar can't make it up far enough. Okay, what if I do this and get the critical attack with... No, it's not It's not a very good critical attack, is it? Um... I should have moved my ranger first. Could have attacked with my ranger first. Now Caesar's gonna take a little bit of unnecessary damage. All right. Yeah, my plan is to take out this guy, move the swordsman down, get the critical attack with the swordsman. And that's not going to quite be a kill either, but alright. Alright, good enough. I, I'm, I'm still learning the ropes of this game. I don't have the best strategies yet. I, I realize that. Um, and already... So we've only had the uh, first episode of this Let's Play come out so far, and already I'm getting uh, some helpful tips in the comments, so thank you for those. Yeah, that's not going to be a good trade. Um, that's not going to be a good trade either. I'm going to have you back off a second, because really I want to try... Oh, you're getting the Rangers. I, did, I didn't want you to get to the Rangers. Where are you going to get to the rangers? Okay, well, at least now the knights can't get to my rangers. Oh, no, but the, the rangers can get to my rangers. I, I didn't know there were more rangers. Man. How many enemies are there in here? What What is this knight doing? He's just running back and forth. He's not attacking anything. Being silly. Okay, even with the critical, that's not good enough there. But, uh... Okay, so trust me on this. Moving you just forward to get a better look around. Okay, that that's all I wanted there. And then... Caesar's gonna be able to one-shot this guy. My plan is to have the pikemen finish off the knights, because pikemen are good against knights. Um, yeah, Caesar's got his group ready, so... We're almost done here. Yep, that's gonna be... That's gonna be an easy kill. I didn't even need to set up, like, a pikeman crit to do it. So everybody else just, uh, move forward in as far as you can. Make sure that there aren't any more nasty surprises. And you're probably gonna kill yourself 
doing this. Nope, you're still gonna be alive after it. You're still gonna have a little bit, so we'll just do as much damage to the rangers as we can. Yeah, I'd like to get a little bit better at chess. Um, Dylan's gotten a lot... Dylan's gotten to be a much tougher opponent since we've started playing to the point where, like, all of our matches end in very nasty draws. Or, not not draws. I, I We've drawn once, and I've won all the other ones, but, like, they usually come down to, like, the last few pieces then. I, I have pretty bad endgame. I could be winning a game for a while, but just not really know how to close it out quickly. Kind of like in Super Smash Brothers. I like to think that I'm half decent at Super Smash Brothers, but I'm never good at actually securing the KOs. But we can secure this win. Should have known we couldn't take on such a majestic hound. Yeah, you should have known. That's what you get. Thank you so much. <laughs> there you are, Caesar. What are you doing in this old fort? Good boy. <laughs> such a good boy. Caesar is such a good boy. Yep. Definitely my favorite so far. You can now play as Caesar in Arcade. Cool, we got um, we got their Arcade mission. And we actually haven't gone too over time. So just to close this off, I guess, um, let's take a look at the Codex. Then we'll finish off by reading a little bit more about Caesar. A magnificent and majestic canine, Caesar leads armies with wordless dignity. His mere presence is enough to inspire and guide troops through battle. Uh, personal history and ethos. Caesar was born in a litter of three on the summer solstice. Oh, wow, what a... That's a very astrologically powerful dog. Each pup was promised to the youngest child of a noble family. And while his sisters were were homed far across the seas. Were horned? Homed? Homed. They were given a home far across the seas. He remained in Cherrystone, where he became Mercia's much-loved pet and best friend. Aw. Um, Caesar's closest companions outside the royal household are his crossbow-wielding personal guards, Horatio and Beatrice. As well as protecting him on the battlefield, they also provide mid-combat belly rubs and ear scratches as required. What a great character. Great job just making this character. I love it. Alright, um... I think we'll do more side quests next time, but let's see who they... what missions they are. Okay, so this one's gonna be Mercia up here. And this one... Oh, it's gonna be Greenfinger! That makes sense, because Greenfinger said he'd stay and try and hold the line if any uh, of the Felheim troops came in and attacked. Um, so yeah, I think next time we'll be playing as Greenfinger, guys. Uh, thank you for listening to my ramblings. I'm the Comic Foil, and I will catch you next time with some more Wargroove. Watch watch Queen's Gambit. It's, it's really good, guys. It's like, it's like such a good show. Oh my god. 